week we had looked at uh, rules to live in perfect unity. Did you know that sometimes, regardless of how well you treat others, you're not treated fairly? Sometimes because in our life, because of drugs, alcohol, and things and choices that we've made, we have people that tell us we're worthless. We have people that tell us that we're not valuable. What's this? What is this? Who would like to have this? I only see one hand. Lily, come here. Lily's the only one that wants this $20 bill. Come here, Lily. This is a real $20 bill. Lily, is this a real $20 bill? Would you like to have this $20 bill? Well, here. What if I crumpled it up like this? Would you still want this $20 bill? Why? <laughs> What about now? Would you want it now? What if I crumpled it up and I stepped on it? Would you still want that $20 bill? Why? Because why? Would you want it now? Why would she want the $20 bill? You know, regardless of what I did to it, in the end, you still want that $20 bill, don't you? What can you do with this $20 bill? Buy something. You could buy something with this twenty dollar bill. What if it was crumpled up? Can you still buy it? Yeah, you can. They'd still take it. They would unwrap it. They would fold it out, and they put it in their drawer. What if it was all muddy? Would you still want it? Well, it's not muddy. That's your twenty dollar bill. Thank you. You want to sit down? See, the truth is that sometimes in life, regardless. And how we've been beat up and everything else. <laughs> how many of you guys would have taken that $20 bill regardless if it was crumpled, dirty, wet? It's still going to spin. Did it change the value of that $20 bill by being crumpled? Did it change the value of it that I stepped on it? How many of you guys would have been down to make up a $20 bill? How many of you guys been down to pick up a penny? I do when I walk with uh, Rod. I pick up pennies and I pick up, and so I hand it to Rod because he can't reach that far down. Uh, that's, you're going to tell him that time we see him on. But anyhow, the value of that $20 bill did not change at all. And I want you to know today that regardless of what people have told you in your life, regardless if they've told you that you are worthless because of this or because of that, you are valuable. How many of you guys know that you are valuable today? Each and every one of us is valuable today. Just as that $20 bill was there and it was crumpled, it still had the value of $20. You know, it, was, it could have been dirty, it could have been crumpled, it could have been all those things increased. Any of you guys been there? Dirty, crumpled, creased, stepped on did you know that you are valuable today? Each and every one of us is valuable today. And we are valued because, number one, there's people that love us. I asked you guys, has anybody told you that they love you today? Has anybody told you they love you today? If not, turn to the person next to you and say, I love you. You are of value to me. Go ahead and take a minute and do that. Tell them you love them and they are of value to you. How many of you guys have just made you feel good to know that somebody loves you and you're valuable? And the truth is that regardless of what we've done in our life, we have everything to live for because we have Jesus Christ who values us more than anything else. This morning I'm going to be looking at Matthew chapter 10 verses 29 to 31. But you guys are valuable to the creator of the universe. You are valuable to somebody else other than yourself. Each and every one of us has value in our life. So in verse 29, are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to 
the ground far apart from the Father. But even the hairs of your head are numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are more value than many sparrows. Father, I just thank you, Lord, today that we can come into your house. And God, that we can come into your presence, the creator of the universe, the one that created everything, and you say we are valuable. God, I thank you for that. Lord, I ask that you would help us to realize the value that is in our own lives. And God, we ask that as I share the word of God, Lord, that you would just touch our lives. Touch my life this morning, Father. And we give you praise for that. In Jesus' name, amen. We are a value. Each and every one of us is unique. How many of you guys know that you are unique? We are created in the very image of who? God himself. We are created with that image. And in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 31, it says, He created you. He created you. He created me in his image. And it says, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness so that they may rule over the fish and the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in numbers. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish and the sea, the birds and the sky, and over every living creature that moves upon the ground. Then God said, I will give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth, and every tree that has fruit with seed in it, and they will be yours for food. And all the beasts of the earth, and all the birds in the sky, and all the creatures that move along the ground, Everything that has breath in it, he gave to us. And in verse 31, it says, God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. God did not say it was very good until he made you. The rest of God's creation, he said it was good. But when he created you, he said it is very good. Each and every one of us have value in our life. How many of you guys know that you're very valuable? You know, I remember growing up and watching the Six Million Dollar Man, you know, all those things. Today, some people are worth six million dollars because of the surgeries they had. We knew a guy over in Lahore, he had 29 surgeries, I think it was. He, he, he would tell you all of his surgeries. And I said, you know, Jerry, I said, you gotta be worth a six million dollar man by now, he says, I'm probably worth more than that because of the surgeries. But I'm not talking that kind of value. You and I are valuable to the creator of the universe. To the point that God created you to look just like you. Man, sometimes we harp on ourselves. We go to the mirror and we say, oh my, what's that looking back at me? But when we do that, we're saying, God, you didn't create me the way that I wanted to be created. God, I'm telling you that you should have created me to be six foot ten. God, you should have created me to weigh, you know, this amount. But God created you and I uniquely as we are. And we cannot change who God created us. Aren't you guys glad of that? That God created each and every one of us to have value in life, regardless of the things that the world says. And you can go on into Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. And it says, Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and he became a living being. God created you and I to have a personality. Because why? We're valuable. 
I would not do well on an island all by myself. I'm just telling you that. I would drive myself crazy because I would end up talking to myself and I would answer myself. I like being around other people, at least three or four. I do not like being around, as we learned in uh, uh, Bangladesh, over 10 million people in the city of Bangladesh. Manila, over 10, uh, over 10 million people in Bangladesh, 10 million people in Shanghai, China. Over 10 million people in Tokyo, Japan. I think Tokyo had 30 million people. I do not like to be around that many people, but I enjoy being around others. Two or three, four, five, six, 15, 20. But when you start getting above 150, I kind of really get a little antsy. But I enjoy the uniqueness of other people. If you ever want a good day, just go sit at the airport and watch people. Go to the train station and watch people. And you can see the uniqueness that God has created in each and every one of us. With five personalities. And nobody has exactly the same DNA that you do. Wow. When I was in the prison system and I taught in the prison system, those guys were convicted because of their DNA. Pretty impressive. Nobody else is like you. You are valuable. <coughs> Each and every one of us has a certain value in our life. And guess what? Just because we've messed things up ourselves, because of the choices we've made, you are still valuable. Am I right? How many of you are perfect? Good, nobody raised their hand. How many of you guys are imperfect people that God is working on that you have value in your life? See, each and every one of us is imperfect, but God values us more than anything else. Guess what? He has your picture sitting on his refrigerator. There's missionary cards back there. You guys can take home today so you can pray for the missionaries. God has your picture on his refrigerator. Why? Because you are a value to him. My mom and dad had pictures all over the uh, refrigerator growing up with missionaries. But I kind of think about it. Imagine how big God's refrigerator is. If he has just your picture there. And wait, but Dave, there's all these people in the world. That's right. His refrigerator has just your picture on it. Not a little bitty one, but I'm talking an eight by ten. And he sits there and he says, you are of value to me. Everything that you do in your life has value. Yeah, you make bad choices. Yes, you make mistakes. Yes, you've done all these things. But you are valuable to me. And we go on into Luke. Chapter 12, verses 6 and 7. It says almost the same thing as it did in Matthew. But we're going to find out that God not only values us, that He loves us. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are numbered. Do not be afraid. You are worth more than those sparrows. Why? Because you and I have value to our life. Each and every one of us is very valuable. What is the most valuable thing that you can think of in your life that you own today? You should point to yourself and say, it is myself. Because you are that valuable. You are treasured. Why? In John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved you. Uh, David doesn't say that. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And in John 3, 17, it says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, that the world to him might be saved. 
Why? Because God loves us. Man, there's times that it's hard for me to love myself. And God loves me in spite of everything that I've done. How many of you guys know everything that you've ever done and you want it to be broadcast? Not, not me. But God loves us that much that regardless of what we've done in life, He says, I want you to know that I love you and you're valuable to me. You're so valuable that I've given everything for you. What about in Psalms 103, verses 8 through 12? It says, The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger. God, I thank you that you're slow to anger upon my life. God, I thank you that you love me that much. But see, it goes on, it says, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor really harbor his anger against us forever. He does not treat our sins as they deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. Aren't you guys glad that the creator of the universe finds value in you and that he can love you? God finds value in each and every one of us. And he loves us that much. What about what it says in 1 John 1, 9? It says, if we confess with our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins and purify us from all of our unrighteousness. Our crumpledness, our being stomped on, our trampled on, being put down by others. God comes in and he says, I love you, that I'm willing to remove that. Because he values human life. What about in Romans 3, 22 through 25? It says, this righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. And it says, there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. Here's the cool thing. It says, for everyone, or actually it says, for all of sin and all short of the glory of God. And in verse 24, and all are justified freely wow, by his grace and the redemptive niche, redemption that came through Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement for the shedding of his blood to be received in faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness because of his forbearance that he had left their sins. God said, you know what? It doesn't matter what you've done before. You're very valuable to me. I find value in your life and I'm willing to give everything for you. I'm willing to give up everything that I have just so that you might have eternal life. What about in Isaiah 43, verses 1 through 7? It says, But know this, this is what the Lord says, He who created Jacob, He formed you. Wow! The very God that created Jacob, Jacob formed you. He formed Israel. He formed all the nations. And it says, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you. I called you by your name. Man, think about it. My mom and dad, when I was growing up, if they really wanted my attention, and if I was ignoring them, they would say, David Wesley Java? Yeah. They knew my name. But imagine the creator of the universe finding so much value in you. He knew your name before you were ever knit together in your mother's womb. Before you ever were. That's how much value there was that God created you in his image to be unique. He created you to have value. And see so it goes on and says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not oversweep you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. Did you know that we're going to go through things in our Christian life that we're going to be trampled on? We're going to be beat up. We're going to be crumpled. 
We're going to be told other things, but it's a lie. Because God says you and I are valuable to Him. He created us so that we could have value. And He says, you're going to go through these things in life, but when you go through them, your mom and dad are sick and there is no other hope. I want you to know that I find value in you. And you can put your trust in me. Whatever the bottom has fallen out of your world, I want you to know that there's value in your own life. And I love you. And I care about you. And he says, I'm going to be with you. I'm always going to be there. He says, I'm not going to leave you. And he goes on and says, because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather them from the west, and I will say to the north, give them up and to the south. Do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name who I created. Oh, wait a minute. Everyone who is called by my name, who I have created. Is there not a person that God has not created on the face of the earth? So God has called us to glorify Him. He's called us. Why? Because we bring value to Him. In Psalms 139, verses 1 through 18, God knows us very well. Regardless of what we've done, God is willing to still love us. He knows us better than anybody else. But in Psalms 139, verses 1 through 18, You have searched me, Lord, you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. We were talking just before church, sometimes our thoughts. I told Phyllis, I said, well, you know all my thoughts anyways. I said, I'm surprised you didn't put those pictures up, you know, earlier to read my mind. And she says, sometimes I don't want to read your mind because of the thoughts that I have. I'm just saying because sometimes we're human. And God knows our every thoughts. He knows what we are thinking. You can't hide anything from him. It says, you discern my going. Now I lie down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is spoken on my tongue, you will know it completely. You hem me behind and before. You lay, me, you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. Or too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go? from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. I will rise on the wings of the dawn. If I settle from the far side, even there is your hand will guide me. Why? Because you and I are valuable to the creator of the world. Everything that you and I do brings value. Did you know that God glorifies in you? Did you know that, if, like I said, if he had a picture of you on your refrigerator, when he looked at it, you'd be the only one that he would see. Dave, how can he do that? He's God, and his picture that he sees is each and every one of us as an individual, not as a group. Why? Because we are valuable. We hold such value to him. And regardless of what we've done, we've been trampled on in life, regardless of all the things that have come into life. Any of you guys live in this life and never had anything go wrong in your life? Yeah. Why? Because we live in a world. And because sometimes we bring things upon ourselves. Sometimes it's no fault of our own. Sometimes it's because of other people that things are dumped on us. That you and I are a value to God. You and I are a value to each other. And in verse 13 of Psalms 139, For you created my 
inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And all your works are wonderful. Mom, who's your father? Is your father the king of all kings and the lord of all lords? That means that if you're a lady, you're a princess. If you're a guy, that means you are a prince. Why? Because you are a value. Each and every one of us has value in our life. We are valuable to each other. We live in a world that is constantly beating everybody up. It is up to us to share that word that they are loved. And it is up to us to say, you bring value. There's a lot of people, to be honest with you, that it's hard sometimes for me to find the value. Because why? They hurt me. Because of things that have gone on. Because of different things. But they're a value. We need to treat them that way. When I bought my wife her second uh, diamond ring, it was for our 15th anniversary. And it was more expensive than the first one. And I took my daughter with me. She was 14, and I took her with me, and I said, Kirsten, I want you to go with me. I said, I want you to help me find a ring for your mom for, our 15, for my 15th anniversary, for your mom's and mine's 15th anniversary. And my daughter picked out the ring that my wife has. She says, Daddy, she says, this one here, Mommy would really like. Why? Because it had value. You guys see what I'm saying, right? Each and every one of us are valuable. We need to look into the eyes of other people and see people as valuable as they are. And in verse 16 of Psalms 139, it says, Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious are your thoughts, God? How vast is the sum of them? And in verse 18, were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. God finds value in our life. And if God finds value in our life, in our brokenness, <laughs> In our troubles. None of us live the perfect life. But God finds us valuable. Have we ever shortchanged what God has called us? Valuable. More precious than diamonds. So they say a diamond's a girl's best friend. And I thought about getting my wife a chunk of coal and giving it to her and saying, Honey, this is very valuable. Please treat it carefully. She would have looked at me and she would have said, You're nuts. Well, honey, I know that because of pressures in life that's going to happen in our marriage and because of all those things that are going to come on, one day this chunk of coal is going to be a diamond. And it'll be very valuable. But see, sometimes you and I do that with our Heavenly Father. And we say, God, I'm just this old piece of chunk of coal. And I have no value. But God says that there's value in each and every one of us. If you guys would stand with me this morning. I don't know where you're at. I don't know what's going on in your life. I know that we've already had an altar call. But maybe you just want to come talk to the Lord and say, God,
God, I feel like I've been crushed. God, I feel like that I've been stepped on. I feel like that I've been crumbled. God, I need to know that I'm still valuable to you. These altars are always open. Father, I thank you. Lord, that you consider me valuable. God, that you consider each and every one of us valuable. Lord, you know us. And God, you told us that one day we're going to judge the angels. God, I thank you for the value that you placed on my life. But God, I thank you that you've given us Jesus. Lord, that loved us so much that he was willing to give his very life for us because we have value to you. Lord, as we leave this place and we go into the real world, Lord, let what we say, let what we speak to others, Lord, be something that is encouraging to them that will bring value to their life. Father, we just thank you for this day. We give you all praise. Jesus.